Hi everyone, it's Stephen at Brandy Go again, back with the latest video in our series for the CMO's Guide to China Marketing. And we've got a little bit of a twist today because thanks to all your comments and feedback on previous videos and podcasts and all the other content that we've been producing, we're going to do something that's a little bit more agency focused today. So some of our partners and friends from international agencies all around the world have been getting in touch saying, can we offer a few thoughts that are specific to them? that they could pass on to their clients. So we put together six things to outline for you guys today. And without further ado, we'll get straight into it. So point number one, the very first thing we would stress to you to pass on to your clients is that China should never be an afterthought. If you are about to embark on a process of developing an international marketing strategy, global marketing strategy, of which China is a part, make sure it features prominently in your thinking because there's a lot of things that are going to impact here that might be more difficult to change further down the line. So one example of this is web development. If part of your campaign, part of your project involves a website, if you build it and then say, oh, hey, this needs to be used in China, there's lots of things that might have come up that you're not going to be able to fix very easily. So things like the main name can have an impact, the server that your website is hosted on, some of the functionality of your website if you've got a whole bunch of youtube videos somewhere they're just not going to work here in china and could take you all the way back to the drawing board so just to reiterate china should never be an afterthought when it comes to marketing it should be considered integrally and considered right at the beginning of the campaign point number two to make sure you're given due consideration is build in time for the regulators so another example here being wechat if you build a WeChat account, if you want to have a verified WeChat account, which comes with some extra bells and whistles, some additional functionality that your clients can benefit from, then you need to have in place all the required paperwork. You need to have gone through all the required loops for all of the regulators, and this takes additional time. So factor that into your campaign planning. The third point to keep in mind, and this is something that we talk about quite a lot and across all of these videos is the channels here work very, very different to anywhere else in the world. So again, when you are working with your clients to come up with a digital strategy, don't think that China social media, for example, has like for like with the Western equivalents. They just don't work like that. Audiences are different, functionality are different. The channels here can be quite tribal. People are using each social media channel in very different ways. So again, just bear that in mind and make sure it's part of your initial planning when you're working with your clients on your marketing strategy, particularly for China. Number four is a nice little mantra to keep in mind. Expect the unexpected. China is incredibly dynamic. Things move really quickly here. And some of these changes that come into place can have a great impact on your client's China marketing strategy. Now, another good example of this is very recently Baidu, which would kind of be the closest thing that we have here in China to represent Google, has implemented a new thing in that if you are advertising on Baidu in a similar way to a Google Ads campaign, you can't actually, unless you're a Fortune 500 company or a very prominent company that's favored by various different parties, you can't actually drive traffic to your own website in the first step. You actually have, have to have a landing page set up within the Baidu ecosystem. This is new, it was implemented very quickly, and we're finding that we're working hard of our clients to make sure they respond to this and take advantage of it. So be mindful, these new regulations, new rules can come in quickly and you have to be ready to respond fast. Another example on top of the Baidu situation that we just explained is e-commerce at the moment is going through a quite intense period of legislation. Regulators are working very hard from multiple organizations within China and it's all based on encouraging fairness and better practice and protecting the brands and protecting the consumer. All of this is a good thing, but it means that that e-commerce and the platforms are evolving very quickly. And if your client is relying on that, you need to prepare them to be able to react quickly and accordingly. Number five, think of the messaging. Again, something that we talk about regularly when we talk about localization, but for your clients, they need to be mindful that what is effective messaging in other territories around the world 
is not necessarily going to be effective here. One of the great campaigns that we worked on was with the beer brand Goose Island. Now Goose Island is an incredibly successful brand. It's now owned by ABM InBev and we worked with them on their China market launch. Their messaging and branding pretty much everywhere else in the world was based on a very much a kind of hipster aesthetic, a hipster vibe, but a hipster and what that is recognized as here in China is very, very differently. So that strategy wasn't gonna work here. Now, there was a fantastic client and we were able to work with them to adapt that, think more of an artistic, musician-led vibe, more events and KOL driven. And that really helped us to amend their messaging the client was happy and it led to a far more effective China marketing campaign than just trying to crowbar in international messaging that we knew wasn't going to cut it here. And last, and by no means least, number six, budget. China is not cheap anymore. Those days are long gone. You're now looking at budgets for most aspects of marketing that are comparable with Europe and the US uh, in terms of agencies that you might partner with here and the costs that they're working with. Shanghai is now one of the most, if not the most expensive city in the world to live in. And all of the overheads and costs that come with that need to be reflected in the budget that you're allocating or your, your client is allocating for successful marketing in China. Do not expect a cheap and cheerful campaign. Do not expect to be able to cut prawners and be able to cut price. It, it's, it doesn't work like that anymore. Be realistic with your budget. So there we go, that's our six things that we think our agency friends and partners should be mindful when working with clients and talking about China. We're always here and we're always available and happy to offer our insight. If there's anything you think we've missed, if you've got any specific questions to anything in this video or any of our previous videos, just leave a comment down below or contact us via social media. We'll have all of the addresses that you can reach us at at the end of the video. There's actually a podcast that accompanies this video as well that you could be able to find that on our website. Just go to the drop down box that has blogs, ebooks, and podcasts, and you'll find our agency focused podcast right there. And check out our brand new ebooks on the website too, which you'll see at www.brandigo.com. Once again, thanks for viewing. See you next time.